Today we are making what's known as hydrated aluminum. We have a heated uh, pan, stainless steel, that is dedicated specifically to making hydrated aluminum. We have 16 fluid ounces of water, distilled water, deionized distilled water. So we want to heat this water up as much as possible. We have rinsed previously this container out with distilled water to uh, get rid of any impurities that might be in it. So the first thing is to do is to heat up the 16 ounces of distilled water. So our water is warm. As you can see, it is steaming. We don't want the water boiling, but hot enough where the solution does not separate. If you use cold water, the solution separates. So we don't want that to happen. We have 57.54 grams of sodium hydroxide to add next, also known as lye. You will notice there will be great ebullition in the making of this as it's added. It will react with the hot water. So again, that is 57 point five four grams of sodium hydroxide added to the water now always remember always add the sodium hydroxide to the water never add water to sodium hydroxide or you will get a pretty big surprise as it splatters and might even cause a fire so always make sure that you add your sodium hydroxide to the water. So here is 3.5 grams of aluminum. This is needed for making around 1,000 grams of phonograph compound. And our aluminum content is 0.39% aluminum. That is not even 1%, not even a half a percent, but 0.39% aluminum in this compound. But well, as you notice, the volume is actually quite a bit. This is 3.5 grams of aluminum. So here is our aluminum, now into the form of little balls or little portions. Now we'll start adding the portions to the solution. Most people don't realize how reactive the sodium hydroxide in water is to aluminum. see the little pieces dancing around as they're added to the solution. The fumes are not good for you. Even though I'm wearing a mask, it is still not good for you, the fumes for this. So we'll stand back and actually film it from afar. I'm actually showing you this in real time. Because it doesn't take too long for the aluminum to go into solution and completely dissolve. <coughs> you saw a substantial 3.5 grams of aluminum being added to this solution. 
As I said, this is a 0.39% aluminum solution of of what's known as hydrated aluminum. That's what we just made is hydrated aluminum. As you see, except for this one very little bit in the corner, it is pretty much all reacted. All the aluminum is dissolved into the solution. There are many collectors and historians who do not believe this process. But as you see, here it is. It's over in less than two minutes. It is completely dissolved. Now if you do this in cold water, it takes significantly longer and not as much of the aluminum actually goes into solution. If there is any impurities, perhaps the aluminum foil is not pure and may have other metals in the aluminum foil. This solution has to be filtered several times in case there are other things that are not aluminum into the aluminum foil. It pretty much only dissolves aluminum in the uh, with the uh, sodium hydroxide. So this solution is what's known as sodium uh, hydrated aluminum, made of sodium hydroxide, distilled water, and aluminum foil. So this is our hydrated aluminum in a pourable container. We have a triple filter, coffee filter in a funnel into a clean, this is a special jar or, or a flask, bottle, whatever you may call it, that we specifically use for hydrated aluminum storage. So we start the process of actually filtering the solution. This is filtered several times through changes of filters. You notice this is how dark and murky it is at this point. You notice this is quite a bit lighter in this container. And you can see the solution going through the filter. The filter is in case other materials beside aluminum that have not dissolved into the solution that we don't want those into the solution other than aluminum hydroxide. So this is what we're doing is we're creating the aluminum hydroxide solution. This is 16 ounces of the solution. You can see that we have, are filtering quite a bit of the solution. See how dark it is up here? And see the difference down here. That's why it's very important to filter your hydrated aluminum when making Edison phonograph composition. This is a hardening agent in cylinder records. Okay, as you see, we are done with our first filtering. Many would ask, why do you need to filter this solution? Why? Well, if you look in the funnel, look what's left. And this is other part this is aluminum and other metals that have not been dissolved. The primarily primary amount has is in the solution, but what has not gone into solution is kept in this funnel. Now we are going to our second filtering of the solution. This is our second filtering bottle. This is the bottle of our first filtering. This bottle 
has been washed out again with distilled water on the outside and rinsed out with distilled water. So we have changed out our filter with a fresh three filters. And we are going to then now filter this solution again through three coffee filters into this brown glass bottle. This second filtering already the liquid is flowing faster than it did in the first filtering of the solution. And you notice there's not as much particulate matter in the filter as it filters through. This is a very important step in making wax cylinders to reduce the noise, making sure there is no extra particulate matter in the aluminum hydroxide solution or hydrated aluminum as some people call it. We are nearing the completion of our second filtering of the solution. You notice that on the second filtering there's not as much particulate matter in the f filters as the first time. The first time the filter was quite silver. Now some might say, well you're filtering all the aluminum out. Well that's not exactly true. We are actually just getting the extra particulate matter out. The solution has fully uh, incorporated what aluminum is needed into the solution. So we were get just getting extra particulate matter that will be nothing but noise if it is left in the wax. Now it is time for our third filtering. This is this has been rinsed out. After a long time, making hydrated aluminum actually etches glass. So even after cleaning it, it will have this residue left on the glass, even though it's, it's washed and rinsed. Again, a fresh three coffee filters in our funnel. You could see the two filterings significantly cleared up the solution. And this is our third filtering, which will be our last one. So the solution will be ready to make cylinder records. So we used a total of nine coffee filters for this filtering process. And this is the clarity of the final solution. And as you can see, quite a difference from the cloudy silver material we saw in the initial filtering process and you notice that it went through the three filters even faster on this third filtering the last step in making your hydrated aluminum is to cap off the container to keep contaminants out after you've done all that work of purifying your hydrated aluminum and what better than a good old-fashioned cork to to finish the job off. You compare that to the clarity of the very first filtering to this filtering. Another important particular is if you waft the smell to your nose, being very careful that you are finished, it should have an almost grape smell, almost like grape juice smell, just slightly. And that way you know your solution's about right. It's just the way the combination of the aluminum and the sodium hydroxide combining just make that grape smelling smell. And the smell is important in making of the hydrated aluminum. If it doesn't smell like that, you don't have the proportions correct. 